Conversion is a miracle. Repentance is a miracle. There are many religious people in the world. But if every religious person in the world on one day was faced with the facts about who Jesus was and how that he is the only sacrifice for our sins and our only doorway to heaven, if in one day all of them, if God dealt with all their hearts, hearts the same way, how many would do how many would actually be converted and come to God and worship Him and accept Christ as their Savior and follow Him with no bounds? 9 verse 11 in the book of Acts. Hode kyrios tros alton anastos. Kyrie thete epite rumen tain Kala monain, you theon, kai ze teson, en oika, yuda, salon, onomate, tare, tar, artarsia, idu, gar, prosukete. And the Lord, toward him having stood up, you go, upon the street, the one being called straight, and you seek in the house of Judas, Saul by name, a Tarsian, behold, he is praying. Go to a man's house named Judah, and you look for a man by the name of Saul, for he is praying. He's a Tarsian. Saul of Tarsus. Now we're not talking about Spain here. We're talking about an area in Asia Minor. And Saul was, and Tarsus was a free Roman city. They didn't pay taxes. And Paul was a Roman citizen. Yet, yet he was Hebrew. Saul of Tarsus. Now that should have shake, shaken up Ananias pretty bad because Ananias knew who Saul was. He was a killer, a murderer of his people. Kai Adan Andra in Poramate Ananayan Onamate Asel Fonta Kai Epitheta Auto Tos Keros Hupos Anaplepsi. And he saw a man in a vision, Ananias by name, having come and having placed upon him the hands, so as that he might see again, that he might look up literally. Apocrite de Ananias Cudie, Acusa, Apopolon, Peritu, Andros, Tuto, Posa, Kaka, Tois, Agios, Su, Epoesan, and Jerusalem. And he answered Ananias and said, Lord, I heard from many people concerning this man. This very man, how many evil deeds that he did to the saints belonging to you. And he did it in Jerusalem. In verse number 14, Kai Ode Eke Exusian Paratain Akerion. They say pontus tus epicalomenois to onomata or onoma su. And here he has unlimited authority from the priest, from the high priest actually, the head priest, to bind all the ones calling upon your name. Verse number four, 15 now, a pande prosatoho kudios poruum pote. Skius et leges esten moi putos tu bastase to onoma mut. Enopion et non te kai basileon quion te Israel. 
Moreover, he said to him, the Lord said to him, You go, because a vessel is huos. Now, people, I'm going to tell you something. We're all cracked pots. We're all fragile vessels to the Lord. All of us are. We're all human. He said, He is a vessel. He is a pot. He's a fragile vessel now. Picked out, elected, he is, to me, this one, to bear the name, or my name, in the presence of all the nations, both kings and sons of Israel. To all nations, he's going to, to witness to kings and the sons of kings and to the nation of Israel. Number 16. Egogar, Hippodexo, Altu Hosa, De, Alton, Heper, Tu, Onomatos, Tu, Tathen. For I, I shall show to him as many as it is bindingly necessary for, for him on behalf of my name to Tathen, to suffer. We get the word patho from this. My name that he shall suffer for my name. A pale thing, de Ananias, Kai, Exel thing, Ace Tain, Oikion, Kai, Epithes, Ep, Aton, Tos, Keros, Epan, Saul, Adelphi, Ho, Kyrios, A pale, A Posta Cain, Me, Asus. Ho, Ophthes, C, N, K, Hodo, Hey, Erko, Hupo, Anat Lepses, Kai, Play Stays, Nematos, Hagu. And left Ananias, and he went into the house, and having placed upon him his hand, he said to Saul, Brother Adelphi. That is a really sweet sound. You know, Baptists have called each other brothers and sisters for 2,000 years there. They've called each other brothers and sisters for nearly 2,000 years. That's a sweet sound. And a brother and a sister ought to be your great companion. And sometimes in your family, you don't have brothers and sisters that love you. You don't have mother and fathers that love you. But you know what God said? All the ones that gave up their mothers, their fathers, their brothers and sisters, I will give you many more. Mm -hmm. Has he? Has he in your life? The greatest brothers and sisters and friends are not in your family sometimes. It's not in your blood relation, but in your spiritual relationship. Ananias left and he went to the house and having placed his hands upon Paul, he said, Saul, brother, the Lord has sent me. Jesus, the one having appeared to you in the way. He wasn't dead either. He was alive. Appeared to you in the way. And you kept on coming just as or so as he saw again and to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit. Paul was converted. Now we have a man, Saul, the murderer, becomes Paul, the victim. Paul would give his life up for the Lord Jesus Christ later. Verse number 18, Kai Euthios, A Pe Peson, Atu Apoton, Apomon, Hos, Lepides, Anaplepson, Te, Kai, Anastas, and immediately they fell away from him from his eyes as Lepides, like scales, like eyelid covers. And he saw again, he looked up, both and having stood up, he was baptized. He was dipped. He wasn't sprinkled, he wasn't poured upon, he was dipped. And by the way, there's plenty of water. Plenty of water and water pools in the master. I've seen that. 
pile of bone, profane, and askeason, <coughs> agantote, metatone, and damasco, mathetone, hemeras, tinas. And having taken food, he was strengthened. He was made strong again. And became, his life became a different life. Paul, the hater of Jesus, now became the lover of Jesus. He was converted. His whole mind, metanoia, was changed. He was converted. His whole life was converted. And he hadn't gone home yet. Because when Paul goes home, he's going to be denounced. He's going to be looked down upon. He's going to be abused. He's going to be exiled. He's going to be anesthetized. And he... Uh, Fellowship with the disciples in Jerusalem some days, it says. Kai Euthios and Te Synagogues. Ecrusum, ton eson hote hutos esen hopios huthiu. And immediately, Paul's voice changed. His whole tone of actions and demeanor changed. And immediately in the synagogues, he kept on preaching Jesus. Because this one is the Son of God. Now, when Jesus said he was the Son of God to the Jews, they said, that's blasphemy. When Jesus was going in his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, they threw their clothes, their robes, and everything for him to ride the donkey into the city as a king of Israel. And they said, Hosanna to the highest. In other words, this is Jehovah to the highest, the most high God, El Elyon. And the Pharisees and the scribes and representatives of the Sanhedrin and the Hebrews said to him, tell those people to shut up. They're blaspheming God because they're calling you the Son of God. They're calling you the Most High. And he said, if they were quiet, the rocks would cry out. The whole creation knows Jesus, but they didn't want to. Existon told, they... Pontus hoi akuonte kai elegon uk hutos esten ho prophecies and Jerusalem tos epi kalomenos to onoma tuto kai tode ace to tuto that is ace elte hina de dominos autos agage epi tus Acarus. And they kept on being struck out of the sense of all the ones hearing. And they kept on saying, Isn't this the one, the one having destroyed in Jerusalem, the ones calling upon the name of this person, of Jesus? And here, for this purpose, he has come that having been bound them, he might bring upon or them to the presence of the high priest. Solos de molon ene dama de moto kai sina ekunin tus urias tus kato okuntos en damasco sim bibazon hote Hutos esten ho Christos. And Saul, the more, he kept on being filled with power. And he kept on confounding the Jews, the ones dwelling in the masters, proving that this one is the Christ. He proved that from the scriptures, by the way. He read the Old Testament scriptures just like Philip did to the Ethiopian eunuch. Verse number 23. Hos de epi le rom tel hemere ikane sina bulu santo ho judeo anele auton. Moreover, furthermore, he kept on being fulfilled the days many. In other words, he stayed there for quite a while. And he counseled together the Jews, counseled together like they did to Jesus, they're going to kill him. The Jews are now going to kill Paul, just like they killed Stephen. Mm -hmm. 
And now the one that gave the death verdict to Stephen, that held the clothes of those that stoned Stephen there at Stephen's gate in Jerusalem, now was going to become a victim. 24. Ignose de tu solo, he epipole, auton, para te te de kai pas, pas, hemeras te kai, nictos, hutos, auton, ana lucy. And it was made known to Saul the plot, the wishes, the counsel of them. And they kept on carefully watching. Also the gates, day and both day and night, so him that they might murder. Verse number twenty-five. Now, la voltes de hoy matete, auto nictos dia tu tecos, cafe calm auto calusantos and spiridi. And having received, the disciples having received Paul by night, they led him down to the wall and lowered him in a basket. Lowered him in a basket. Verse number 25. Now let's go back and get from verse number 11 on and read it in the Amplified Bible. And the Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight and ask at the house of Judas for a man of Tarsus named Saul. Now God, Jesus, is talking to Ananias. In the house of Judas for a man of Tarsus named Saul, for behold, he is praying there. Now Paul prayed before, but now he's praying to God. His prayers are getting into heaven. And he has seen there in a vision a man named Ananias enter and lay his hands upon him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard many people sell, tell about this man, especially how much evil and what great suffering he has brought to your saints at Jerusalem. Now he's here, and he has all the authority, unlimited power from the high priest to put in chains all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, You go, for this man is a chosen instrument of mine, to bear my name before Gentiles and kings and descendants of Israel. For I will make clear to him how much he will be afflicted and must endure and suffer. And for my name's sake, and so Ananias left and went into the house, and he laid his hands upon Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you along the way by which you came here, has sent me that you may recover your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Paul was spirit filled with a different spirit before the spirit of hate and the spirit of evil. <coughs> false religions, the leaders in false religions actually have spiritual guidance. But it's spiritual guidance from the wrong side. And instantly something like scales fell from Saul's eyes. And he recovered his sight, and then he arose and he was dipped, baptized. And after he took some food, he was strengthened. For several years, for several days afterward, he remained with the disciples at Damascus. And by the way, when it talked about Saul being baptized and dipped, there was only one form of baptism all the way from Abraham on. All the sons of Israel, the daughters of Israel, were all dipped in, in, in vessels all around Jerusalem, places cut out for them, mythos. They dipped. They were dipped. The sheep were dipped. Baptism is not pouring and baptism is not strangling. It is dipping. It typifies the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And dipping is the only form of baptism that does that. If God wanted you to be poured upon, he would say nipto. If he wanted you to be sprinkled upon, he could use the word baptizo. But he used the word dip, baptizo. And he remained with the disciples at Jerusalem, and immediately in the synagogues he proclaimed Jesus. The synagogues, that's the Jew, Jewish gathering places. Synagogue is a Greek word to go together. The gathering places of the Jews, the synagogue. He proclaimed Jesus, saying that he is the Son of God. And now let's look. 
Paul, when Jesus approached him in person, he gave up. Lord, what would you have me to do? Who are you? Jesus, whom you are persecuting. They said then, what would you have me to do? And all who heard him were amazed, struck out the sense and said, Is not this the very man who harassed and overthrew and destroyed in Jerusalem those who called upon this name? And he has come here for the express purpose and destined for arresting them and bringing them and chained before the chief priest. But Saul increased all the more in strength and continued to confound and put to confusion the Jews who lived in Damascus by comparing and examining evidence and proving that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah. And after a considerable time had left, the Jews repented and called upon the Lord to save them. Is that what it says here? Mm -hmm. No. The Jews wanted to kill him. They didn't want to repent. They didn't want conversion. Mm -hmm. They wanted a religion. After a considerable time had elapsed, the Jews conspired to put Saul out of the way by murdering him. But the knowledge of the plot was made known to Saul. And they were guarding the city's gates day and night to kill him. But his disciples took him at night and led him down to the city's wall, lowering him a basket or a hamper down on the outside, and he took off. God protected him once again. God would protect Paul, even though he was beaten, he was stoned to death, and lashes, mostly blinded, crippled, so much that he had to have a personal physician following him all over. But God didn't, he didn't die until God kissed him into eternity. His head was chopped off in Rome. Because God watched over Saul till he finished his race. And God will watch over you till you finish your race. April 19th, Marilyn was at the throes of death. Right here. I called all over Bakersfield in the hospital, begging them to take her in the hospital. All of them said, no, don't bring her. I called him Bishop. I told him my wife is dying. And I said, if you don't take her, I said, she'll be dead in a day or two. I said, she's got acute congestive heart failure and atrial fibrillation. And I said, her lungs and heart is completely suffocating and fluid. They told me to bring her over there to the emergency, and they would be out there to pick her up. If I called them on the phone. Before I, when I got there, I called them on the phone, and before I could get out of the car and open the other door, they were out there with a the wheelchair with oxygen taking her in there. I thought it was the end of the road. They told me they didn't think they could save her life, but they tried. Your race wasn't run yet, Marilyn. Mm -hmm. You still got a little bit more footwork to do. I wasn't ready to get rid of you yet. I wasn't finished with you yet. And God wasn't finished with you yet, most importantly. I would have just had to let you go. But God gave me another season with me. Nothing is going to take you out of this world until God's finished with you. Nothing. I've been poisoned. I have cancer. I have been cancer almost 20 years. I've been gutted, sawed up, put back together, two back operations, hernia, prostate cancer, Radiation that almost killed me. Poisoned with arsenic and mercury enough to kill nine people. And I'm still preaching. I'm shaking all over with that mercury. But I'm still preaching. I don't know how some people can stand to look at me shaking like I do. But God isn't finished with me yet either. He'll be with you and each and every one of you. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, He'll be with you until your race is run. Our Heavenly Father, we put this message out for your honor, for your glory, and for the comfort of your saints all over the world.
Father, touch their lives, guide them, comfort them, lead them. In my Savior's name I ask this, and please forgive me where I failed you.